you may uh, greet each other. Go ahead and shake hands and fellowship for just a minute. help walk you through that. Also, uh, I think everybody here have got your information, but if you haven't uh, given us your information, please fill out that card for us. Uh, we have uh, office hours. I am here Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from about 10 to 3. That's changed a little bit. It was just, uh, we've added Tuesdays in there, so let, let you aware of that. A text or a call to me um, is good if you're going to you're going to drop by. I'd love to see you. Uh, small groups, our service time. So 8.30, we have um, prayer at 8.30. Just welcome to come in. The music is playing and it's open prayer. At 9.15, we have small groups. So this is exciting. We have our adult small groups back here in the worship center and for teens. We meet downstairs, Eric and I. So that is something exciting. So you have teenagers, come. Let's give a little explanation how we're working with the kids. So uh, we don't have any child care for that early hour at the moment. We need nursery care for at 9.15. But right now we're concentrating on the teens. Uh, and then during this service, uh, the teens will stay here with us throughout this service. We'll take rotations if they want to help on tech or offering or worship. We'll kind of get you involved there. Um, and then at, after the songs, we dismiss the elementary kids for kids' church, okay? So we love our children, and thank you for snuggling up and helping them uh, interact when it's time to sit or when it's time to stand as we're training up the children. So we love having them in here. Um, let's see. Lots of announcements today. Trunk or treat. So that is happening tomorrow. There are flyers and the back and posters if you need some information. There is also, uh, by the sound booth, a list if you are able to provide a trunk. Um, some of these, you might see that we have a few uh, decorations around the uh, away. We have uh, somebody called SpongeBob and the Rooster. That one has been spoken for. Uh, Cody's going to do that for her trunk. But I brought these in case you needed something to put by your trunk or a decoration. And then we have candy. Bring what you have, but we have lots of candy to support. Really, let me just explain Trunk or Treat. Uh, it is our heart to reach out to the community and to be a light. Uh, we are called to be salt, salt and light. And this is one opportunity when a night that is uh, typically dark, we want, we desire that God will be the brightest light, the brightest power in that in this town tomorrow night. So God has given us favor with the other churches. 
more churches are gathering together. We're partnering with St. Mary and some other churches and just fellowshipping. So if you would join us, we would love to have you do that, participate. We're going to be there starting about 5, but definitely by 5.30, you're going to want to be in your place. Okay? So if you have any questions, um, be sure and let us know on that. And if you need some of these decorations, check with me. I can get some more if we need some more. Um, CR, we got snowed out this last week. We were able to go. We do love the snow. But if you're interested in carpooling to Pueblo on Thursday night to see what Celebrate Recovery is all about, we would welcome you. Um, we'll meet here at 4.30, and it will probably be back here about 9, just so you have that schedule. So we'll be carpooling, and we are excited to get Celebrate Recovery going here in Walsenburg. So if I anybody is, uh, and wants to be a part of that to go with us, I printed um, the directory, and it, some I've already, there's probably mistakes in here, you probably don't like your picture or something, but it's okay, we'll, we'll be printing these again, um, maybe after the first of the year, but uh, let me know what changes you would like, or additions, but this is for our um, PCW family, so we can, there's a list in the back that shows birthdays, there is a schedule of events, so mark your calendars for those men's getaways and the retreats and all the things. We have Parade of Lights, we are going to have a parade, I mean a, a float in the parade, and um, lots of lots of things that are that are going on, so check that out, okay? Um, we, let's see, lots of things, soup sign-ups. In the back, kind of near where Carrie's sitting, there is a clipboard for the potluck soup, and there was a little bit of confusion. I'm so sorry. Uh, yep, Carrie's holding the clipboard up. If you would like to bring a pot of soup next week or something, we are having an all-church potluck on the first Sunday of every month. Some, we have extra bonuses. We've got two pots of soup downstairs, so if you want to stay around and able, please feel free to do that. You can have a potluck two weeks in a row, okay? So we would, we would welcome you to do that. Um, missions trip. We, oh, thank you. Uh, that's, that's, is there a missions trip, Clay? Do you see it? Uh, here we are. There we go. Come on. So Pastor Jim is taking a trip to um, Mexico in 2023, and I know some of you have been interested in that. So I just wanted to get that on your radar screen as well. That, uh, that information is up and going. So you put that on your calendar. And then the next picture of the Google. We had asked for Google to go and uh, comment and put some up pictures. And then the next picture shows that it's working. We've had a thousand views. Yes. So it shows that we are active, we're alive, we're meeting. So please, if you haven't had a chance to do that, go ahead and, and go on Google. And what, what happens when people are on their smartphones and they look churches in Walsenburg, we come up now. And so they can see that we're meeting in our times, which is very, very helpful. So thank you for your help on that. We have one, I think we have the Flamingo Book Club I threw in there. And this is Sharona here, yeah. So she, she is uh, collecting new and used books for the school children. So we'll be hearing more about that. Uh, wonderful. A lot of kids did not have a single book in their home. And so we are partnering with the, with the school and we're volunteering with the school. And so we're so glad to have you showing as part of our family as well. So um, reaching out and touching the community. I have one more and then I'll be done. Okay, fall back. Next week, you're going to sleep an extra hour. <laughs> so, if you have a smart, if you have a smart uh, phone, it might already uh, set back. But if not, we'll be here. You'll be in time for small group and for prayer if you don't set back. So, you're always welcome to do that. So, uh, thank you so much. We are going to um, have offering, but I uh, just a minute as you prepare for offering, Mark's going to come. Uh, after following offering, you'll be able to stand for uh, three more songs of worship. And I just wanted to give you a little heads up. On that last song, you will see prayer partners come up forward. And that's a time, if you have a need, that you would like us to join with you in prayer. We want, we want to be a 
a church of prayer. And we know that they, we need the healings and the touch of God in, yes. in our lives. So that's a time. Please don't be shy. There's two prayer partners. Uh, we've done couples. So you can come up. You can be anointed. You can take a prayer cloth if you want to stand in the gap for someone. So don't let that catch you off, guys. That's the third song. You'll see um, a little explanation happening there. So, Mark, would you uh, help us with offering, please? Yes. Father, we, we reach out to you and we thank you. We thank you that you have provided a seat to sow. I thank you that you've given us the opportunity to participate with you and to sow into your kingdom. And you, we just pray that you multiply abundantly. And as we sow, we're, today we're sowing our finances and tomorrow we're sowing our time. And I pray for just divine appointments tomorrow. I pray that you... Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit. Convict yes. people. Get people to come and say, hmm, something's different about this. And give us the opportunity to truly shine your light, to share your word. And we just pray for souls in the kingdom, because it's what it's about. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pray that the eyes of my heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Dismiss the kids. Dismiss the kids downstairs and our kids workers. Thank you, Sandy and Audie and Jerry, for leading us today for worship. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, Elena and Richard are, um, I think, South Carolina to see to see uh, her mama. So thank you for our worship team. We love. We love having you. So the kids elementary age and younger, please, uh, downstairs, if uh, you would like to go with, I think it's uh, Mark and Michelle. And um, today we, I have, we're going to get settled here. Today I have um, worked for, thought about 10 different messages to bring today. And, um, just never felt peace about any of them. So we're going to start with a review of Walsenberg. So uh, hopefully we are. Did, they, did we just lose the picture? There we go. So one year ago today was my first time standing behind this pulpit. So uh, it's been six months as campus pastor, but we started in uh, early October last year year and Dan, Pastor Danny did two weeks and Pastor Jim did two weeks and the worship team Jose was a part of that yes. and they came and ministered so we uh, there's the part of the team uh, our church became part of Praise Campus and we're just going to flip through these kind of quick as Clay goes with me that's what the church looked like before we came we had the pews and um, that was before we even decided that we were going to yes. take on the campus. So that might be familiar to some of you. The next one, this is the, the missions team that came from Pueblo. And we said, hey, we're going to start and we're going to clean out the place and we're going to paint these people are your friends. They didn't even know you, but they prayed for you. They knew you were coming. They come and came and prepared. This is some of the pictures that we, when we had, we had a broken toilet. We had some bright paint. We had lots of things uh, in and around the building. Hopefully, you can see some of the changes. The next one, Clay. Uh, here is, we had an open house on December 15th where we had uh, Santa Claus and we gave some presents away. And we had an anointing of this building. 60 people from Pueblo spread out all over this building. And we anointed uh, doorposts and, and um, doorways and we prayed because Siri knows me. So we prayed that God would come this way. So let's keep on going. There's the first one. We moved in the chairs, which looks a little more familiar now. And um, 
We're just going to keep on clicking play. There we go. And that's some of the uh, open house evening. We're going to go kind of quick now. There is our first Christmas Eve. There was three of you, Sam was here, and Joey and Delphine, and then three of us from Pueblo, our first Christmas Eve service. So, uh, water baptism, we've had four people baptized this year. So uh, we rejoice with you. Uh, uh, one of our, I think that was Easter potluck. Pastor Jim was here and had the house full of Easter potluck breakfast, I believe. Um, keep on going. I think there was an egg hunt. BBS. Yes. We had a great BBS. We had 16 kids at the highest day and flipped through some of those. Uh, some of the kids came. We joined together and um, really was our first effort of meeting, ministering into the community. Ladies Retreat, that happened just a few weeks ago. We're going to do that again next October. Uh, and we're going to add a men's retreat. So mark your date on that. It's in August. That's our retreat, our planning that we just had at uh, Mark and Michelle's, where we planned and envisioned. And you'll see in the back of the the directory, some of those dates that we are working towards, and you are a part of this great community. Uh, our worship team, isn't that fantastic? God has provided our worship team. They are putting their talents for them, uh, the kids, and just some of the men, I think. That's the, the guys hanging out when we had the BBS snow cones. So, um, you know, looking back to the beginning, we talked about we are part of the Rocky Mountain District, and we were part of something bigger than ourselves. And um, I mentioned that I really wanted to push, push the pews aside so we could have small groups, so we could be in community, and that has happened. We are doing that. We have our 915 service with the adults and the teens downstairs, and it's just a taste. It's just a taste what God has in, for us. Um, I had told you uh, one year ago, if you were sitting here, which I think there probably was maybe about six of you, <laughs> and that change is hard. Yes? yes? Even when change is good, even when it's necessary, even when it's necessary to change your life, change is hard. And it always starts with discomfort. So we have walked through some discomfort comfortable things, but change is moving us forward. Uh, Romans 12, 5 said, in, so in Christ we, though many, form one body. Each member belongs to all of the others. And at PCW, Trace Church Walson Group, we just said we can have, this is a place where we can have tough this conversations. We might not agree on everything, but there is one thing that we can agree on in unity, and that is our hope in Jesus Christ. So we are a family of different personalities and different family members, but we love each other. Um, there's a saying that says, when you run alone, you run fast. When you run together, you run far. Let's run far, shall we? Let's run far. This is only a beginning. Uh, we introduced Hope Grows here, I ask you. Uh, does, can Hope grow in Walsenburg? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Where we can. Yes, where we believe, we discover, develop, and do. We discover God for ourselves. We develop our walk with Him, our person, our digging into the Word, and our small groups, and develop His uh, presence in us, and learn more about Him. And then we do. We do what God calls us to do, and that he has made us to do in our purpose for our life. Um, the very first, the Monday after, the first um, Sunday that I was here was the, was the work day. That's when we came, and we took away the pews and brought in the chairs. And our dream, we did that, was to enhance the legacy of this church, the founders of this church, those that had invested through the years past, those are the beautiful stamped tin that invested. Our heart and our goal was to welcome, be welcoming for people to come in and feel immediately that this is a place that they wanted to be a part of. Amen. I hope that you yes. have felt that as you in this last year. We're creating a beautiful atmosphere for God to fill and to welcome and draw people in. The pews, um, you know, we took away with those because we wanted to have events in here. 
We wanted to be able to do our small groups and dream for the future, and we are doing that. Um, so we did not, um, this is the part that I, I love. I said, I wrote it down when I said last, I said, our, our church house is like the little engine that could, right? Yeah. It may be small in stature, but it is mighty in God's way. A mighty little church because of him, not because of us, but because of him. I said, oh, I would love to have a safe, thriving, healthy place for children. To hear this place full of laughter and beautiful chaos, I said, that children bring. Keisha, you walked in and you changed the atmosphere of our church. Thank you so much. And more children are coming. And this Corey is so happy to have somebody to, to play with. And we have beautiful chaos. During our potlucks, we're going to have beautiful chaos. But God be glorified. We love these young people that will be coming and they'll be helping Clay back there on the on the tech and as they join the worship team and help us in the yes. offering. Yes. They will be leaders of the church yes. in a blink of an eye. We will be raising up children. Yes. Praise God. Um, the Holy Spirit changes the atmosphere. Only God can change lives. Amen. 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 Only God can do the big things that we ask him to do, that we need him to do. Our job was to prepare the way. We've had one year we're preparing the way. We're just beginning. So thank you for helping us to prepare the way for those that will come beyond us and join us as we reach out into the communities uh, to, to spread the light that God has. We had our first potluck gathering one year ago, and again, six of you, and I think it was Sandy and her boys that were there, Sam and Cher and Jamie. So we have in our in our directory, I believe there's 41 people that we printed in here. And I know that there's some in here that are not in this directory. So we are still growing. Um, last year, I gave the message, and it was, do you live? Do you live, Walsenberg? Do you live? And um, I am just going to give a recap cap of that message uh, because it kept coming back to me. As I said, I prepared other messages, and this one just kept coming back. I think because it is the heart and the foundation of Praise Church Walsenberg. So I have a picture of my parents, and uh, this was a video call. My dad is now passed. And, um, but I spoke in this, and it was, you could see the delight in their eyes when you call and you make time. The simple fact, just to stop and call and to look them in the eyes. And my question would be, I wonder, do you hear God speaking those words to you today? He may say, hey, son, hey, sweet daughter, I'm thinking of you today. I see you. Are you busy as usual? <laughs> That's what my dad always said. Are you busy as usual? <laughs> he said, I'm not so much. I'm just sitting here waiting for you. <laughs> uh, but then he'd say, I love you and I miss you. That's what God says to us. When was the last time you took action to check in with God? To see the twinkle in his eyes. To experience a smile on his face just to rest in his holiness. God is sending up the flare today. Are you getting his messages? He's asking, do you live? Are you alive? Are you following me? Lamentations 3.40 says, let us examine our ways and test them. And let us return to the Lord. One of my favorite stories is Rodney Gypsy Smith. He was born outside of London in 1860. He crisscrossed the Atlantic 45 times preaching to the audience. Gypsy preached with great passion, but more powerful than his preaching was his prayer life. Once some revival seekers asked him, what's the secret of revival? How can we get the revival you have? How can we take that back to our towns and cities? And Gypsy, without hesitation, said, go home. Lock yourself in your room. 
kneel down, draw a circle where you are kneeling, and ask God to start a revival in that circle. Pray fervently, pray brokenly that God would start the revival right here. It doesn't start out here, it starts right here. It starts right here with us in the heart. Gypsy knew how to dial up God just to say, here I am. I just want to see your face today, Lord. I just want to sit here in your presence. That's why we have altars here. At any time, you can come, you can sit, you can kneel, just to spend time in his presence. Amen. The good news is, we are only two feet away from revival, and that's the distance between your knee and the floor. When you take time to kneel. God has always had a dwelling place. First, it was the tabernacle in the wilderness. Second, it was the temple. And third, because of the work of Jesus on the cross, his dwelling place is right here. Do you live? Does he live within you? Have you entered the Holy of Holies this day? Matthew 27, 50 in the message describes Jesus' last moments on the cross. He cried out in a loud voice and he said, and the temple curtain was torn from top to bottom. Behold, the bell, what does it mean? The, temp, the bell was torn top to bottom. Why was that important? The bell hung in the temple and separated the holy from the holy of holies. It was 60 feet wide, 30 feet high, and 4 inches thick. Only the holy priest, the highest religious authority at the time, could enter behind the curtain, enter the Holy of Holies. And only once a year on the Day of Atonement. But Christ brought that all to an instant, in a moment when he came down from heaven and brought the final sacrifice for our sins through his death on the cross. He was without sin. But on the cross, all our sins were transferred to him. He died in our place. No longer does separation divide a holy God from us. Because he came, he came to be near us. James 4, 8 says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Amen. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. Are you getting the message? Are you hearing him? Do you live? Or does your life resemble this dead sea? Eric and I were just there, and I have a picture of it. The dead sea is in the Jordan Rift Valley, and it's fed by the Jordan River. Its waters are 1,400 feet below sea level making it the lowest level of elevation on earth. Mm -hmm. From a distance, the Dead Sea is beautiful. It has this beautiful color. The Jordan River flows in, but because there is no outlet, when you get closer, the waters stink. They, there's a stench that rises because nothing can live within those beautiful waters. There is no outlet. How many of us are like that? We have beautiful lives from a distance. We look good. We know we go to church. We go to Praise Church, Walsenburg. Our lives stink because God is trying to work and stirring within us. He's stretching us and we're not listening to him. May our ears be open and hear what the voice of the Lord has to say today. There's good news. Ezekiel 47 is one of my favorite chapters. And we hear the life-giving river that flows into the Dead Sea. It's a lot of scripture we're going to talk about today, but let me read it from uh, Ezekiel 47, verse 1. Then he brought me, this is a vision that uh, Ezekiel had. Then he brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Next, he brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around the outside of the altar gate that faced east. There was watery trickling from the south side. 
What he's saying is that life-giving water flows from the altar. It flows from the threshold, under the threshold, and goes out. It goes on in verse 3. It says, as the man went out east with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a third of a mile and led me through the water. It came up to my ankles. Then he measured off a third of a mile and led me through the water. It came up to my knees. He measured another third of a mile and led me through the water. It came up to my waist. Again, he measured a third of a mile. And it was a river that could not be crossed on foot, for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be crossed on foot. And he asked me, do you see this, son of man? Are you getting my message? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I returned, I saw a large number of trees along both sides of the riverbank. He said to me, the water flows out of the eastern region and goes down to the Arabah, the Dead Sea. When it enters the sea, the sea of foul water, the water of the sea becomes fresh. This is a prediction of when Jesus is coming back and he will make that water fresh and life will come. That is dead will come back to life. Verse 9, every kind of living creature that swarms will live wherever the river flows. And there will be a huge number of fish because the water goes there. Since the water will become fresh, there will be life everywhere the river goes. Beautiful example of prophecy. Ezekiel saw a vision that represents the gospel presentation. The river of life that's flowing from the threshold of the temple, the threshold of the altar where we pray. Are you getting his message? Do you live? It says the Lord measured off a third of a mile and led it through the water, only ankle deep, and another third, and it went up to his knee, and another third, and it went up to his waist. Are you getting the picture? It's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. How deep? Are you only into your ankle? Or are you deep into your knee? Or are you swimming in the river of life? How deep are you in the river of life? Praise God. The fourth time, the Lord measures off a third of a mile and leads Ezekiel through the water. It was a river that could not be crossed on foot. A river deep enough to swim in. Praise God. The life-giving river starts at the temple. Remember, we are the temple. We, if he dwells in us, when we meet him at the altar, the river of life flows through us and out of us into others. That's what's going to be happening at Trunk or Tree. We will be that river of life that will be flowing out into that parking lot and out into that street and out into the, under the thresholds of the schools and under the houses in, in Walsenburg. Praise God. That river, the life-giving river of salvation flows into every home, every school, and every business. Praise God. Let it be so. And to Levita, and the area. Yes, let's not forget that. <laughs> let's go, uh, go deeper and deeper into the countryside. Uh, so we're going to move on to the look at the map of the United States, and you see the mighty Mississippi River. It runs right down the middle of our country, north to south. And two hours of north of Minneapolis, you will find the headwaters of the Mississippi. And it is called Lake Estacia. On the left side, you can see the lake, and on the right side, I think there's another picture that looks like that one right there. So on one side is the headwaters of the mighty Mississippi, and on one side is the lake. Where it begins, it's only 12 inches deep and 20 feet wide. You don't even get your knees wet walking across the headwaters of the mighty Mississippi. But when the river has been given time to emerge and grow, 1,000 contributions of springs and creeks, trillions and trillions of raindrops. By the time it comes, it starts with a little beginning. It becomes so powerful, the next picture, that it pushes the ocean back. There it is, meeting the ocean. It is pushing the ocean back. What a beautiful representation of the river of life that pushes back the gates of hell. It might start out as just a small beginning, but it is powerful. God is powerful. Jesus 
proclaim the victory when he said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against Amen. it. Amen. You notice I and my, the church belongs to Christ. Yes, it does. It's not our church. It's his church. Amen. The battle belongs to him and so does the victory. Amen. Isaiah 43 says, 43, 19 says, Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And what, last year, one year ago, I said, what if God's message for you, Walsenberg, is that this would be the year of the Lord's favor? What if he said, I want you to live, I want you to really live, I want you not only walk, I want you to swim in the river of life. We're going to read a large portion of scripture from Isaiah 61, if you'd like to turn with me there. It will be our last portion of scripture. Isaiah 61, starting with verse 1. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Anybody mourning here today? And provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planning of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Let's be a planting of the Lord. Then turn with me to Joshua. Sorry, I, I misspoke. Joshua 3. Here we go the last one. Joshua 3, verse 1. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then... You will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. Let's follow God's way. We've not been this way before. He will show us. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits before you, and do not go near the ark. That was before Jesus came and the veil was torn. Verse 5, Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to his priests, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the ed edge of Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here, come here, and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the, all the ites, <laughs> the Jebusites, all the ites. See, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord and the Lord of all the earth set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be caught off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage, all during harvest. Yet, as soon as the priests who carry the ark reach the Jordan and their feet touch the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. 
it piled up in a heap, heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarebeth, where the water's flowing down to the sea of the Arabah, that is, the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground. While all of Israel passed by, the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. We see here that the Israelites were stone throws away from the promised land. And that's where many of us get stuck. We can see it in sight. We are waiting for God to part the waters before us. And he's saying, step into the water. And then I'll part it. The definition of faith is taking the first step before God reveals the second step. Joshua 3, 5 says, Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow God will do amazing things among you. How many of you need an amazing thing to happen? Oh, yeah. Consecrate ourselves today, for tomorrow God will do amazing things among you. Many times we get it backwards. We want the amazing we want to do amazing things for God. But that's not our job, right? That's his job. He's the one to do amazing things. Our job is to consecrate ourselves to him. And if we do our job, then God can do his job. Amen. Consecrate means full devotion. We dethrone ourselves. We yield ourselves. We take ourselves off of that throne. And we enthrone God. We give God veto rights and power over our lives, right? He can do as he will. We don't tell God what or how to do things. We are to consecrate ourselves by getting into his word and by prayer to discern God's will for us. Joshua 3 8 says, Go and stand in the river. We want God to part the waters. We want God to go first. Today I encourage you to look for opportunities to take a step of faith. Or is God speaking to you to take that step of faith, to trust it, to go ahead and step in that water and he can part it. Remember the last two words of the Gospel of Mark are signs following. <laughs> We always wanted to say signs proceeding, right? We want to see and then we'll follow after what God is showing us. But we do it. We follow what God says. And then his signs will be evident. God is honored as we act as if he is going to answer our prayers. Take that step of faith and act if God is going to answer your prayers. Are you hearing his life-giving message today? Do you live? Have you, hear, have you seen the prayer flare from God asking you today, do you live? When is the last time you looked in, into his face? We always think we have time. One year later, my dad is gone. Will you be here tomorrow? We don't mean to ignore God forever. We don't mean to reject him forever, but just not today. But let me remind you, inaction is action. And indecision is a decision. And delayed obedience is disobedience. It's time to take action. It's time to step into the river. Praise church, also, Lord. If you're ready, if you're ready, if you're ready to take that step, Let's find a time of prayer. Sandy and the team, if you'll come and lead us in prayer, I would ask of you all to stand, if you would, as they come. May today be the day of a response. May today be the day of your action. God is speaking to us. He's asking us to trust him, to follow him, 
As we sing this song, feel free to pray where you're at, come to the altar, but just for a moment, spend time with God. Thank you that you are good and that you are strong and that you go before us, God. That you lead us in the ways that we should go, that we should not go to the left or to the right, and we would follow straight and hard after you, Lord. I ask a blessing on my friends, Lord, as they go through their week, as they go through their day, Lord. May you be ever closer to them than you have ever been before. May you speak, Lord, through your power and your might, through their word, that they would know that you see them, that you hear them, that you're guiding them. I ask for protection. I ask for blessing in their families. I ask that you would heal relationships, Lord, that we think are void and gone and irreparable, God. That you would come and restore and do the work that only you can do, Lord God. We thank you for your life-giving river. We thank you that you ask us to come and follow you and that you show us the way. Lord, we thank you in your mighty name. God, continue to use your mighty little church. Continue to use us, Lord God, in whatever way that you would seek. God, whatever way, Lord Jesus, we want to say yes to you. We want to say have your way. We thank you, God. Break the bondages over this area, over Walsenburg, over Lolita, over the communities, God, in the line around, Lord. Whatever bondages that come and, and, and put the people in constraints and the people in oppression and depression, Lord God, we pray in your mighty name that those would be broken today, God. That you would heal our families, Lord God. That you would bring delight and joy within our household, Lord God. We thank you, we praise you, you are mighty, you are strong. We give you praise today in your mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. Remember, there's two pots of soup downstairs that people would love to share with you if you're able to stay around. And again, next week we'll have another potluck. Uh, directories, trunk or treat, any questions here, okay? Thank you, God bless you. Have an amazing week. <laughs>